Yo guys, what is going on? Today we're going to do some visual effects in Blender. Like the ones that you've seen in the Avengers Infinity War when Thanos snaps his fingers and people disappear. That effect specifically is the one that we're going to cover today, the dust. So let's get into it guys. You can use anything you want in um, doing this tutorial. I'm going to use a hand and here the hand is. You could use a, um, a monkey, a cube, anything you want guys. It's a work on anything. Once you've got your cube item in, is we're gonna add in a subdivision surface. So go over to the properties and add in a subdivision surface. And obviously, all right, if I just take this right down, you can see how like grainy and bad quality it looks. But we know that when we render it, it will look perfect. So for the sake of this, I'm just gonna bring this right down just so that we have more power with this computer to play with. Then, then of course, we've gotta make sure that we go shade smooth. And then what we're gonna add in is a explode. If we hit spacebar, you see nothing happens. And the reason that nothing happens is because we haven't added in a particle system. So you're gonna go click on the particle system and hit this little plus button. This is gonna add in a particle system. And now when we press play, we're gonna see it. But you see there's particles falling, but nothing's happening. And that is because when we go over to the modifiers, this particle system is under the explode. So we're gonna drag this up so it's above it. Now you see pieces of the hand that are just falling apart and falling down. This is what we want, but you see all those little like halos that are falling down off this. This is what we need to get rid of next. So we're gonna go to the render and where it says halo, we want to go none. And now when we play it, it's full. Okay, they're still falling here which is a problem that we'll sort out in a minute. So guys, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna try and control the direction of everything falling. So one way we can go around doing this is going to the field view and taking the gravity and taking it right down to 200. And now everything's gonna be falling really, really slowly, as you see. Make sure that all your transforms and everything are correct. As you see, everything just falls. It doesn't really fall very far, but it still falls. So now what we can do, guys, is we can add in a wind. A wind? We can add in wind to um, blow these particles everywhere. As you see, they're slowly falling now. If we add in wind, it's going to make this, obviously the wind's going to be able to control it and blow it. So, get wind and go G, Z and move this wind down. Also, this is really, really big. So we're gonna just scale it, scale it right down. Then you're gonna go Control A. You guys don't have to do that because um, it's just because this was huge and I just wanted to put it small. Now we're gonna move this wind and move it to a corner then what we want to do is we want to rotate it around about 45 degrees it doesn't really matter and we want to make sure that we can move this up so that you know we want the direction of particles to blow as you see nothing really happens it just blows it over to that corner so making sure that we clicked on it we're going to go over to the properties and the strength we're going to take up to six now when we start this again You'll see everything's getting yeeted off over there and you see it kind of gets dumped over here and it's getting like rebuilt in a way it's just still getting stuck there and the way that we're going to get around that is we're going to click back on this hand or your object and we're going to go over to the and we're going to make sure that sorry the modifiers we're going to make sure that we got the dead unticked now you just see it's goes up and disappears. Let's say you, you're you not happy with that, you want it to be in the frame for longer. You know, go over to the physics tab and the lifetime, you're gonna increase to 100, oh, that's 10, 
100. Now, you'll see it, it should be longer, which it has. It's great. I'm getting there. It's just, it's, you know, it's not like amazing. Like there's no turbulence or there's nothing really cool about that. So let's go add in a force field and let's add in a turbulence. And this turbulence, we're gonna bring the, the strength up to 12. Now if you play it, everything kind of gets, you know, chucked around a bit more. There still isn't that many particles there. So click back on your hand or your object and we wanna to go to the particle system and the number of particles we want to give it something silly like, I don't know, I'm just gonna try 50k. And then, I'm gonna see what happens. The next problem that we have is that when you look at this, it's breaking up everywhere, all at the same time. And if that's kind of a, an effect that you want, then this is great, but I don't. So, I'm gonna go over to where source in the uh, particle system. I'm change jitted to grid and then I'm take both of these on and then you're gonna see it's all breaking up in like set lines okay right now you see when it all breaks apart it's breaking apart in big chunks and the way that we're gonna overcome that is we're going to change this resolution to high number let's go with 100 just to show you guys see now it's a lot lot smaller and the way that it goes away for the final render guys I'm gonna use probably like 250 I think that's the maximum we can go. If your computer's struggling in like the world settings before you render it, just bring it back down to 10. You know, like I've got um, the subdivision surface level down to zero so that it looks really bad, but the render view is going to be higher. So just make sure when you go back to the particle system that you remember to increase this resolution. You can just add in a camera and then we're going to make it spin around the hand as it dissolves. So We've added in the camera and then we're going to go shift a add in a curve and then we're going to go busy a circle then i'm going to click back on this camera and go to the constraints and go follow path then you're going to hit on the target go busy a circle and you're going to make sure that you click follow curve and x minus x then when you bring it around you'll see that it actually follows but for some reason the camera settings are messed up so I'm gonna start mine at 50 because I want it to be on this side. Then we're gonna go back to this Bezier circle and go S and scale it up. It might be easier if you're looking through the camera. So then making sure that you're on the Bezier circle, hit G and Z, move it up and S to scale it back out. Hit G and Z, bring it up even more. Go on the camera, go R, X and bring it down. And maybe bring it up a little bit and then maybe going back to the Bezier. Hit GZ and bring it up. Then guys, aim the camera to where, you know, too happy with it. It'd be time to animate this camera. So go back to the camera like so, and making sure that you're on frame zero or one, hit I to insert a keyframe. As you see, the keyframe is put down here. Then you're gonna drag it all the way to 250 and go either negative 150. Just make sure that, like for me, this is starting at 50 so it has to end at 150 as for this to do a full rotation is 100 so whatever you set the, the start frame on just add on 100 so what we have is this kind of effect okay somehow i've managed to make this do two lots of two sorry let me make sure that you know it goes on 100 so that would have just been minus 50 into the keyframe and now as this spins it does a hundred and obviously when we turn up all the um, settings over here to make sure that the resolutions turned all the way up and everything it's gonna look a lot better but guys finally remember to texture it and light it what I'm gonna do for the sake of that for this I'm gonna add in a plane go s 10. Through a tutorial that we have done, we made lava. It's one of my earlier tutorials. We're going to add that in. So if you haven't seen it, make sure that you pause this video and go check it out. I'll just put a little eye up here somewhere. I'm going to skip making it because that's a whole video in itself. So I'll be right back. So guys, we're back and time to add in our textures. So make sure you go to the shading and 
for the sake, I'm just going to put a matte cap on, evening, and let's go add in our texture. This texture is going to be lava. As you see, it's like really big. And if you've got that, just go control A, apply all these scales. And it's just because um, the plane, as we scale it up, we need to apply our location. Also, what you're just going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that you've got the um, ambient inclusion bloom is on and screen space refraction what we're going to do is we're going to go view and go to the view camera and we're going to texture this as well like so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go add in a empty plane axis and go g z and bring it up to round about there i'm going to also scale this out just a little bit go g z lift this up so we can see the particles as they fly away but the reason why we added in this empty is that we're going to set the camera to um focus in on this area to give it a bit more depth of field so you're going to open blades all the way up to 16 and we're going to give this a tracking target empty and then we're going to bring this down to probably one point so, and quickly we're just going to click on this world and I'm going to take all the light out and go back to our world scene and as you see it's, it's quite a good distance there I think if you wanted to go ahead one more step and make this even better looking you could go over to the sculpt or like modeling play with this terrain and make it bumpy and everything so guys now we're going to switch to the, the final render that I've done for this hope you guys enjoyed it if you did drop a thumbs up if you didn't drop a dislike and i'll see you guys in the next one